So now this last video is going to talk about our impact as humans, and so you're going to hear me rip on humans a little bit because we're doing a really good job of screwing up the environment. So um, we are already kind of talked in the previous video about how we are um, disrupting nutrient cycles. We're taking them from one place and putting them somewhere else, right? It's just like, you know, we put fertilizer in to make these beautiful fruits and vegetables, and then we take those vegetables out and put them somewhere else. So we need to keep putting fertilizer into that ecosystem. Um, so obviously agriculture is causing a lot of that, um, that issue. And so what happens is a lot of the nutrients in the soil just get exhausted. So to counteract that, one thing that um, farmers are doing is this, which is going to be rotating their crops. And so what they basically do is different plants are going to uptake different nutrients from the soil. And so if they rotate them, what they've actually found is that they will actually be able to not have to fertilize as often. So that's something in the right direction. Um, another thing they can do is this type of setup where you've got a hill and so the runoff from one crop is actually going to help to fertilize the, the next crop and so on and so on. So you can do stuff like that, which is kind of interesting. Um, so we do add a lot of toxins to the ecosystem through fertilizing our plants and that type of thing and obviously with pollution. So one of the big pollutants is going to be nitrogen that I talked about before. Um, we are using fertilizers, we're cultivating our agriculture, and we're burning different things that are going to put nitrogen up into the atmosphere. And so, as I mentioned before, that's going to be causing two major things that you've heard about before, acid rain and depletion of the ozone layer. So um, that is not a good thing. Um, the main point or the main contributor to acid rain is going to be combustion of fossil fuels, right? So driving our cars, that type of thing. Um, so the main chemical that's going to cause that is going to be sulfur oxides and, and different forms of nitrogen. And so what happens is that's going to react up in the atmosphere and then it comes down as acid rain. Now, people think like, oh my God, acid rain, like it's going to fall and it's going to dissolve my skin. No, but it is actually causing forests to completely die because it's changing the pH of the soil so much that the plants can't handle it because plants like a certain pH of their soils. And so it's totally changing everything and killing stuff off. So that's the problem with acid rain. Um, another thing that's kind of scary that's happening, and you might have heard of this before, is um, bioaccumulation of toxins. And so um, what happens is it can cause um, um, biomagnification to happen. So I have a picture to kind of show you what biomagnification is. Um, so let's say that um, there's a lake and we, are, um, we have a factory nearby and mercury is getting into that lake. So what's going to happen is you're going to have your primary producers and they're going to, as a part of being, you know, at the bottom or, you know, in the water, they're going to take up some of that mercury. Okay, so it's not really high. It's 0 0.025 parts per million in these organisms as, as far as accumulating in their tissues. But now you're going to have a fish come along and eat not just one of those, but a bunch of those. So the amount of mercury in his tissues has now gone up because it's eaten so many of these guys that had mercury in them. Then another fish comes along and eats that, a ton of those, and so on and so on. So when you get to the top of the food chain, those organisms at the top are going to have super high amounts of different chemicals. So this picture here is actually showing you PCBs, um, and this is actually what caused the, um, well, one of the causes for the um, bald eagle to almost go extinct. So what happened was the bald eagle is obviously at the top of the food chain, and we were using DDT. DDT is a very, very scary, scary toxin. Um, that they were using to kill mosquitoes. And what happened was it was bioaccumulating and then all of a sudden these eagles were sitting on their nests and um, the contributing factor of the DDT was that it was making their shells so thin that when the eagles were incubating their nests, they were actually killing their babies. So once again, population collapsed because there were no young ones to actually replace them. And so um, since the ban of DDT, the eagle population has come back so much that they're off the endangered species list. So that's a nice high note to, to end that little story on. Uh, a little scarier story is going to be the mercury issue. So there's a lot of mercury in the ocean and what's happening is your top um, consumers, things like sharks, um, tuna, those are going to be big ones, they actually have huge amounts of mercury in them. And so they're asking people who are pregnant or pre be planning on becoming pregnant to not even eat tuna or to very much limit it because of the amount of mercury. And mercury has been linked to um, 
uh, birth defects and stuff. So it's really scary, this kind of things that are happening, but you can see that if we ban things, we can actually make a difference, right? Um, so those two examples, um, DDT and mercury, are going to be our examples of biological magnification. It's also called biomagnification or bioaccumulation of toxins. And then, of course, we are causing climate change by increasing CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. So um, as I'm sure you've seen, we uh, have all these graphs. I've got some graphs right here on my, where does my PowerPoint go? Oh, there it is. Um, showing you temperature in red there and then CO2 levels. So you can definitely see there's some sort of a correlation between global warming and CO2 levels in the atmosphere. Um, so the reason that we're so concerned about global warming is because it's going to be changing um, ocean currents. It is already starting to change ocean currents and that is going, as you'll see in later chapters, that affects um, weather patterns. Um, but also, you know, our corals are bleaching out, our oceans are becoming more acidic, our sea level is rising. So there's a lot of crazy things attached to that whole global warming idea. Um, and then the last thing here is we're also doing a great job of depleting the ozone layer. So as you know, the ozone layer is going to be kind of this layer in the atmosphere that acts like sunscreen for the Earth. And what happened was there was um, a chemical called chlorofluorocarbons, and that was found in refrigerants and aerosol sprays. And those were building up in the atmosphere, and those actually eat up and react with ozone and actually made a huge hole in the ozone layer. So the reason we're concerned about that is because, once again, coral is bleaching out. The amount of skin cancer rates are going up. So um, it is kind of scary to think about. But the good news is there have been put all sorts of bans on CFCs, and now the ozone layer is actually coming back. So that's the high note I'm going to leave you on so that we don't get super depressed and, you know, just, just want to end it all. <laughs> so um, that's going to be our um, ecosystem chapter.